mesmerizing, isn't it? No, not the lighting. There, that one, the painter. Doesn't she look familiar? It's her I want to tell you about. The unique, the creative, the very first painter woman, Jeanne Toussaint. She's about to leave a permanent mark on the Maison Cartier. This is where it all started. Paris, the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties. Paris then was... And... And this too. A timid jungle, an effervescent crowd. And among this crowd, a woman whose nickname was the Panther, Jeanne Toussaint. How could you fail to notice her? With her red tata boots and her Chinese silk pyjamas, Jeanne has style, she has taste. Daring taste that shakes up the rules. Actually, this is where it all really started. This office is a little quiet, isn't it? Actually, it's the birthplace of an iconic style, a style whose creations became signatures. Louis Cartier. This is before the Great War. He meets Jeanne, He names her head of creation in 1933 to take over from him. At that time, giving a woman such a position was rather outside the box. Well, actually, it shattered the box. China, Persia, and India influence her style. She takes a bold gamble when she decides to pair yellow gold with vibrantly colored stones. Her hands tie emerald with coral, amethyst with turquoise, snakes and crocodiles, both cultural but full of movement. She creates a new bestiary and with it invents a new style, a taste, the Toussaint taste. 1948, the first sighting of the sculptural ponte on a brooch. The following year, it reappears on a sapphire cabochon. Jeanne knows that the ponte will become her trademark, her poor print on history, the mark of proud womanhood. The Toussaint taste spreads like the wind of freedom. Women who lived in yesterday's world, today's and tomorrow's. From Daisy Fellows to Monica Bellucci, from Maria Felix to Annabelle Wallis, the Panther is invited to events hosted by the Duchess of Windsor and to the red carpet at the Cannes Festival. Wait, let's go back in time one last time. Jan's presence is stronger than ever. Panthers curl up inside watches, pounce on bracelets, swing on necklaces. In emerald or spotted in onyx or sapphire, they've traveled through time, never forgetting who invented them. Jeanne Spenter. Jeanne the Panther, the mortal. Welcome to London, where humor is added to red, white, and blue to make it swing. The United Kingdom is part of Cartier's identity. At the turn of the 20th century, London became one of the Maison's three foremost locations, along with Paris and New York. In London, since 1902, Cartier's style took on an inimitable British twist. Let's take hold of the handrail, head for the platform, and stay out of the rain. All about for central London. Cartier found its way into the exclusive and restricted circles of the aristocracy and the British Empire. The Prince of Wales considered Cartier to be the jeweler of kings, king of jewelers. In 1902, he became King Edward VII. Two years later, Cartier was awarded a royal warrant, official supplier to the king's household. In the 1870s, Alfred, son of the founder, lived in England for a while. Later, Jacques, his youngest son, followed in his footsteps. The next stop is Bond Street. Welcome to one of British high society's most attend soirees. Ladies and gentlemen, jostle for the attention of a young 22-year-old who took over Cartier London in 1906, Jacques. Today, the festivities continue, ensuring that Cartier maintains a presence throughout the season, from the Goodwood Festival to the Queen's Cup Polo. Just in time, listen, the ticking of the iconic crash watch. It's time for the atypical. The maison put squares into circles and set the tempo of the times. It was Jacques' son, Jean-Jacques, who sparked a real Cartier craze. British quirkiness, the sense of humor and charm that influenced the maison's designs from London. Cartier's archives, the maison's physical memory, a dazzling sight and so creative. Full of designs and sketches, it is a true inventory that passes before our eyes. Ballroom jewelry mixes with Maharaja ornaments alongside cocktail shakers, cigarette cases, braces, and other accessories for London ladies. Elegance and daring with a touch of British humor. Cartier Newborn Street, a very chic lady. Walls that have welcomed the London smart set and the whole world for almost a century. 
Today, here comes the sun. The boutique has been renewed. The timeless maison shines brighter than ever. It could be the beginning of a great Russian novel, but in fact, it's a true story. An opportunity to discover new territories, a crossing, snow white pages on which the Katya Brothers' inspiration ran free. It is the very end of the 19th century when the great journey eastward began. Everyone hurries to board the Northern Express. From Prince Saltikov to Maria Pavlovna, many members of the Imperial Court can be spotted traveling on board the train. Destination Paris and its international exhibitions, its world fairs, and most importantly, Paris and the refinements of the Maison Cartier. All of Russia rushes to the City of Lights and Pierre Cartier starts his own journey. In 1907, Russia awards him an official supplier's license. Here we are. A century later, the heart of Russia still beats within the Maison. A 197-carat cushion-shaped sapphire. It belonged to Tsarina Maria Fyodorovna. Set in a bracelet by Cartier in 2015, it is now called the Romanov Bracelet. Colossal. Pierre Cartier's creative whirlwind meets Russian opulence. Towards the end of the 1800s, he starts working with platinum, which he turns into lace. Cartier has just invented the gallant style. The head ornaments and tiaras became light and airy. Come closer, it has arrived. Cartier's Russia. As an admirer of Russian techniques, the jewelry maker studies them. He imports the rare art of cliptic by which one sculpts gemstones. An unrivaled craft preciously kept alive by the maison thanks to a dedicated atelier. It can still be found throughout the high jewelry collections of today. 1909, the Ballet Russe première in the City of Lights. The passionate movement electrified Paris. A new color palette emerges and Cartier's inspiration soars. Ever so delicate pieces inspired by feathers. Blue and green come together and the peacock pattern appears. A unique color combination that becomes the Maison's signature style. Cartier's art has traveled far and wide and was displayed in the Hermitage Museum in 1992. Today, a new chapter in the saga is unfolding. It is taking Cartier to the heart of Moscow and marks the opening of a new store for the Maison. Cartier's Russian novel is far from over. In this gallery of the East, light and shadow become one, and the motifs hypnotize us. Persian girl from Middle East, Levant. Today, Cartier shines at the heart of ancestral cultures. Open your eyes. The moment is important. It is here that history begins. 1903, Louis Cartier pays a visit to the Musée des Arts Décoratifs in Paris to discover a first-of-its-kind exhibition dedicated to the Islamic arts. He relates to this culture and it inspires him. The man is an impassioned collector. From museums to retrospectives, his collections travel. A taste that he shares with his designers. Louis Cartier sees further. Yet, it's his brother who answers the call of the sea. Arid land against a blue backdrop. In the Persian Gulf, Jacques Cartier searches for new horizons. He explores the fine pearls market. He accompanies fishermen at sea, learns their traditions and customs, whilst living their life from within. Intense sources of inspiration. For Cartier, pearls enhance necklaces and shreds themselves onto bracelets. In his diary, takes photographs and makes detailed drawings. The scent of adventure is in the air, a fragrant breeze from the east. Eastern architecture, the inspiration is direct and clear. Then a door opens onto abstraction. Pure lines, geometric markings, a new language. The east merges with a modern design that maintains only what is essential. This vision of the Islamic arts becomes intrinsic to the Cartier style. Fast forward through history. Since the first day, the jeweler has understood the Islamic arts, the play of form and line. 
the purity and sense of harmony, stylization and abstraction. A journey that continues to this day, opening doors to new horizons.